All right, let me turn that on, the audio and stuff. There we go. We're live with more Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Hi, welcome, hello everyone. Now, one thing I wanna say that I did not realize until I actually just started this stream, apparently I have no water. I have, I have a cup and it has very little water in it, which is a bad move on my part. So at some point, I'm gonna have to get up and go grab a fucking a refill. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean for that to happen. With that said, I'm not gonna take a drink of said water because I am thirsty. All right, I just got out the shower. And my hair is still fucking wet. I have a lot of hair for a dude. It's pretty long. It's like, at this point, it's past shoulder length now. I think at this point it's, um, what is it? <laughs> it's like down to my chest. At least the front part is. Like, front part is like down to my chest. Back part is like at the bottom of my upper back. I got a lot of hair. So... My hair is still wet, and I tied it up in a bun because I couldn't put my headphones on if it wasn't. So that's going to be a pain in the ass once this is over. Alright. So, course party, right? Where we last left off, we did... I want to say the third chapter? Yeah, we did do the third chapter. Encounter, which was centered around the teacher. And her... Her past... Her past, well, her past as a whole, but also, apparently she had a guy she looked up to who I can't even remember the fucking name of at this point. It's been a while. We took, like, a little detour. We went from, we went from Corpse Party to playing, like, uh, Outlast for a hot second. Played Outlast, beat that, that was fun. Alright, so now we're at the fourth chapter, Purgatory. Which, I can't wait to see what this one's about. The first one had to do with, uh, Seiko. Second one had to do with Mayu. Third one was the teacher. So, take a quick guess. I'm gonna say Purgatory might have to do with, uh... Probably, I can't remember the guy's name. The dude who fucking... You know what? Actually, you know what? Take that back. I'm gonna think Shangri-La is gonna have to do with, uh... The guy who likes taking pictures of dead bodies. That fucking creepo. So, I don't know. Maybe Purgatory is... Maybe it's, a uh, What's his name? Shido? Is that his name? Main character guy? Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Something's not right here. What button is it? Is it... Oh shit, I don't even remember the buttons for the damn thing. Is it one? Yes, it's one. I want to go back to the title screen real quick. Because I forgot. The last time we played this, we ended it by looking at the, uh, the little audio logs that they had from the voice actors. I want to head back into the... What the fuck are these people in my house doing? They're banging on walls and shit. Guys, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Cut it the fuck out. What are you doing? Alright, I'm going to take the voice while I put that down because we don't need that right now and it's going to get in the way of my reading. <laughs> if it was English, I would just let it be. But it's not, so I can't do that. My bad, we're not doing that. Purgatory. Sayaka. Which one is Sayaka? Is that the, uh... Is that one the children ghost? The one that got stabbed in the eye? Over and over and over? Alright. Our friendship will last forever. It will never die. My mind was in a... Was in a daze. The lights on the ceiling were spinning. Moving in and out of... Uh, can't even read already. Moving in and out of one another. Alternating between hazy and distance. And distance? And distinct. And forming spiral patterns in my eyelids. I was being jerked along the ground by my legs like a heavy sack of rocks. I could feel every step he took. He took vibrate across my entire body. Wait a minute, is Sayaka the one who got her legs chopped off? 
Oh my god, she's still alive? <laughs> but I couldn't do anything to stop it. I could no longer move on my own accord. I just kept getting dragged inch by inch across the filthy floor. Then eventually he stopped and threw me down, and I rolled hard onto my face. I was helpless before him. Which one is Sayaka? I can't remember. Maybe this is... Oh, wait, hold up. Maybe this is the, um... Maybe Sayaka is the, is the child that got stabbed in the eye. And this is her final moments when she got captured. The piece of chocolate had fallen out of my pocket. I was pretty sure it did anyways. And I wasn't about to let anyone else have it. Give it back, you bastard. The large man took my crum uh, took my crumbled form and roughly flipped me back over to my legs. Is that a- oh, I thought that was a typo for a moment. As if I was nothing more than a doll to him. I was facing him from the middle of the hallway as he readied his enormous hammer and looked right into my eyes. Was this it? Was I gonna be killed now? Please, God, no. I was terrified, but not entirely. After all, she's coming to save me. Naho's coming. I know she is. She'll always come. She's my friend. Huh? Hmm? Yeah, hey, I'm not doing the screaming. I'm not gonna go that far with that. Book of Shadows, episode 4. Purgatory. Oh, shit. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? We're gonna relive the story of the, uh... The occultist journalist. Probably before she got fucked up. Oh my god. I was not ready for this. My name is Sayaka. Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Oh my god. Oe? Oe. Oh, oh, no, oe? Mmm. It's nothing but pure vowels. How do you do this to a man? I'm a junior at Polonia. Oh god, I can't even say it. Polonia. Polonia. It's Polonia, right? Polonia at Academy High School. I'm just a normal girl, but my job. My job conflicts with my studies, so I don't go to school at all. Hmm. A darker kind, of, a darker kind of waifu simulator, I guess. And this was the first day I had. God, this is the first day I had free. I, I can't even read. What the fuck is wrong with me? I'm taking another drink of my water. I have no water with me. That's the problem. I'm not properly hydrated. You know what it is? It's the fact that I just got out the shower and my lips are super dry. Alright. This was the first day I had free in a while, so I called out my friend Naho, and we spent the whole day together having a blast. The last event on our schedule was a Twinkle Girls concert. Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> had a pretty bad fucking night. Damn, I... I believe that. My whole entire week's been fucked up since the beginning. They play, uh, that's why I started playing Sly Cooper. <laughs> they play ever so often at a local venue called Club Beta. And they're also incredibly cute. I try to catch them whenever I can. Recently, Twinkle had been performing on, on evening shows. On, wow, on evening request shows. And they'd be getting more and more attention. As well, as well they should, you know? I joined them on the program a few times myself. And the group and I you joined them on the program, what? And the group and I liked, like to keep in touch through texts and tweets. Brought an office chair off of Craigslist a while ago. Found out today that the chair came with guest. Oh no, was there like termites in it or some shit? Oh god no. Oh hell no. See that's why I don't buy shit off of Craigslist. Right? I feel like there's no, like, there's no, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
not termites, roaches. Is it roach? Are people just dirty? Is that what it is now? Termites, ticks, roaches. What we got? It's got to be some sort of bug. It can't be like rats or possums or anything. <laughs> My eyes meet with Nahos, and we both put our hands in the air like we just didn't care. You're damn right. So cute. Bugs that like to live in bed. So bed bugs? What? I've never had bugs in my bed, so I guess the only thing I can think of is bed bugs. Or like ticks, or maybe... Maybe fleas? I have dogs, but I never... I'm not gonna say they never had fleas, but they never had like a flea problem. Hmm. Oh, bed bugs, yeah. I've never had to deal with that. Oh my god, wow. Yeah, that's why I don't buy shit off of Craigslist. I hesitate when I buy stuff off of eBay. Thanks, Sayaka. Twinkle's the best. I think I'm in love. Right? Aren't they awesome? I mean, their moves in the last song. Oh, I remember. Check it. Check this out. Whoa, you got it down, girl. I thought... What? Oh, that was an exclamation point. I thought that was the word I. Thought... Wait, though I think your hit moves are a teensy bit off. Outside Club Beta after the show, fans were hanging around the street corner, immersed in the lingering rhythm of the music. I wanted to ride that wave myself, but didn't like the idea of blocking the road, uh, road in the process. So now Ho and I just pranced our way back to the station. Hey, check it out. I bought a towel. That's something to be very happy about. Now Ho began waving around a towel she bought at the merchandise booth after the show. She looked like a manador taunting a pop idol. The number one fan. That's excellent. I'll have to buy one next time myself. Spend the last three hours conducting chemical and kinetic warfare against the fuckers. Listen, that was me, uh, I want to say like last summer, for some unexplained reason. I, I get like, I hate to say it out loud because it makes me, makes me anxious. But I guess there was like just a, a fucking like a laying ground of like spider eggs somewhere. I don't know. Cause for that whole entire summer, just baby spiders kept coming from my fucking ceiling. So I just went like, fuck it. I don't care. I took like the poison bottle and I just dumped everything in my room. And I was like, I, I'd rather poison myself killing these fuckers than dealing with them. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> I didn't get sick from it though. All right. No, it's still only nine. Hey, Sayaka, what say we drop by, by Gust? Guest? Gust? Gust on the way back. Gust. Mm. Gust on the way back. Come on, let's get ourselves some sweets to eat. I would welcome the fucking spiders. They could kill the goddamn pet bugs. True. Well, true for you. Me, I'll just fucking, I'll just poison everything. Just pick my dogs up, move out the room, say, you're going to be out there for a couple of weeks. Just dump poison everywhere. Hmm. Ran a case for an actual member of the, the Rothschild family today. Fill me in. I, I actually don't... I don't know who that is. Are they... For some reason, I feel like they're wrestlers. <laughs> Are they wrestlers? Sounds pretty sweet to me. Lead on. Give me a strawberry milk flan special, please. Whatever it was Naho had ordered, it sounded completely alien to me. The heck's that? Sounds super sugary. Something that'll put me in the seventh heaven. That's what. It's covered in milk and ridiculously delicious. Fucking scrump diddly umptious. This is Naho's. Oh god. Sinoki? Sinoki. Sinoki? Sinoki. Mmm. Japan. We're in the same school, same year, same class. Our backgrounds are sort of similar, and well. We talk all the time and eat together and stuff. But most of all, just look at how cute she is. When we're together, she even makes a gal like me all wobbly. I love this little lady. Let's see? It's the most prominent family in the fucking world. They run a huge banking operation and sometimes people accuse them of sacrificing children with the pre- What? With the president at Bohemian Grove? That's not even the right word. I said Bohemian. No, that is the right word. Yeah, it is Bohemian. That is how you say that. And being a part of the Illuminati. I wouldn't put it past them. Well, if they're so big and prominent, how come I've never heard of them? 
put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> That's the best defense I can come up with. Point is, it's good, and you're welcome to try some if you like. Well, thank you. As for me, I believe I'll go with the butterfly pancakes. Did I say butterfly? My bad. Butterful. Coming right up. They'll do... Uh, they'll do... Uh, wow, I can't say the word. They do say girls should insist... Shouldn't ingest a lot of calories after 9 at night, but hell, we hadn't eaten anything all day, so I figured, why not indulge a little? And then she sings, I'm not gonna do that. Naho was- What the fuck? <laughs> what was that sound effect? Naho was gazing longly at her towel while singing the melody of one of, the twi one of the Twinkle songs. She's usually a really cool and collected person, so our better classmates would flip out if they saw her like this. It was only when the two of us were alone together that she let loose with this feminine, feminine, feline-like personality of hers, and it always made me feel really special. You sure seem to like, oh wow, you sure seem to like, ah oh god, what is with me tonight? Why can't I read? You sure seem like you had a great time. I'm glad you can join me. It might be the font. It might just be the font. Throws me off. Naho slowly raised her head up and looked into my eyes, and wow, what a gaze that girl had. I felt like I could lose myself in those perfect peepers. Huh? Something wrong? You have, you just don't remember because people like you. <laughs> and they are inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Ran the case because you thought it was someone else. But you looked him up after. Done with the case and he's definitely... Okay. What if she would have refused the case and sent the manager... Man, if it was me, I probably wouldn't. I, I would just be like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then I would get shot for doing whatever stupid shit that I would do. I'm worried about you, Sayaka. You haven't been getting enough rest lately, have you? I completely hid in my fatigue, but Naho somehow saw right through me. I can never keep anything from her. Yeah, I haven't really had weekends these last... Wait, what? I haven't really had weekends these last two months. Oh, I guess you mean she hasn't had a break from work. Voice acting, soap operas, radio shows. Yeah, I can definitely see the problem. I bet you're one to talk, though. Radio, ghost hunts, and oh yeah, aren't you supposed to be in a movie, too? Totally jelly, by the way. Don't say jelly, ew. <laughs> what the hell? I'm just an extra. I'll be sitting behind T Takumu, Takumu Saito. Eating French, eating French food? For some reason, I thought it said French fries. Eating French food. How wait for me. I didn't announce that yet, though. Where'd you hear about that? You refused one case before. Got a case of sitting U.S. Supreme Court Justice- Oh, God. <laughs> Which name gets? Gets prefaced by honor poll on purpose. <laughs> Send that shit off to the manager. Should have done the same with this one. I mean, how'd it turn out? Did you- Did you- it, did you at least do a passable job? A hitman's not coming after you? <laughs> oh, Mr. Ta uh, Mr. Taguchi. Wow, a lot of Japanese names. Mr. Taguchi's blog, of course. He wrote a ton about it, all in boldface, and he told everybody to cheer you on as loud as they could. Oy vey. Her expression twisted into an exaggerated blob pose, and she sprawled out across the table. You can't say anything around that guy. For a while, I gazed at Naho, who had placed her chin on the table and puffed out her cheeks. Not sure how to break the silence, I tried switching subjects. Oh, hey, Naho. For my next radio show, I'm doing a special one on scary stories. Hmm? The deflated Naho suddenly re-inflated. Guess I piqued her interest. You got a great voice, and I'll... Unlike me. <laughs> you got a great voice, and I love to have you as a guest speaker. You can be my expert, commenting on ghost stories submitted by listeners. Hmm? Her head still glued onto the table, Naho fell deep into thought. She seemed oddly concerned. I couldn't miss the moment- I couldn't miss the momentary twinkle in her eye, though. Success! I just needed to rebate the line and she was good as caught. Come on, please! Do it for me! My listeners know we're friends, and I get a lot of messages asking me why you haven't been on the show yet. You'd be a big hit for sure. 
But more than anything, I really just want to see what it's like to co-host a show with my bestest buddy, Naho. <laughs> Meow. Oh, she mewed. Mewed? That's a that's a word? How she mean meowed? Mewed. She turned into a legendary Pokemon. She was showing interest. It wouldn't take much to get her to pounce on this old yard now. Oh, she does have cat-like posture. Come on, come on. What the fuck am I doing with my life? This was a thing that just sort of happened between us sometimes. She turned into a cat and I played the part of her master. That's, that is, that is, that is fucking kinky. <laughs> There's some fancy cat food in it for you if you say yes. What's that supposed to mean exactly? Uh, I'll treat you at Cafe Qu- What the fuck? Cafe Quill Fat? No, I can't. It's French. I can't. That's not me. Someone get Widowmaker on the phone. Fucking have her say it. Sound good? Oh. Now his face lit up. Okay, I'll do it. Yay! Thank you, thank you. I love you, Naho. Why are you hissing at me? I, I did it. I got the green light. My smile couldn't have been any bigger at that moment. Naho's popularity had exploded recently, so she had been having a hard time managing all the requests she's been getting to appear on other radio shows. Let's see. She followed protocol, but the whole thing was super fucking sketchy. I think I want to talk to my boss about this because there's absolutely someone at my level that should be getting a case for people of those positions. Uh huh. <laughs> Just people at my level shouldn't be accurate. Uh, shouldn't be <laughs> interacting with people like that. I had like a little stroke while I was saying that. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Definitely get it. That's why I don't do any private security shit. <laughs> I was like, nope, not gonna do that. That's a guaranteed way for me to get shot. <laughs> I'll just stay at my night jobs. The ones that nobody wants to do, where no one checks up on me. And it's a dice roll whether or not I might run into like a mass murderer at night. It's okay. No one will hear me scream. I'll die, not peacefully. <laughs> I've been hoping to get a chance to tie our work together at some point, but I never imagined it'd be this easy. Talking to the heir of the largest bank empire in the fucking world. <laughs> That's for damn sure. No, that, you know what it is? The reason is that someone sees that and they're like, you know what? I'm, I'm a higher ranker. I'm someone of a higher rank. Give it to the little guys. They won't notice. And then that guy goes, give it to the guy below me. <laughs> and then it goes down until it gets to you. And then you're like, huh? And then they catch you in the trap. And if you talk back, they're like, well, I don't want to do it, and I'm your boss, so you gotta do it. <laughs> so with that one out of the way, we sat back and enjoyed the hell out of our butterful pancakes and strawberry milk flan special. And before we knew it, it was past 10 o'clock. Naho and I stood up and stared down the road home, stared down, started down the road home, giggling and chatting the whole way. So Naho, when are you gonna go to school again? Planned on it tomorrow. I've been ditching classes a lot for work, but they said I should at least show up to hand in my report. Oh, okay. You're gonna have to turn it. You're gonna have to turn it in too. You know, they'll be asking for it next time you're there. Mm, really? Well, whatever. It's just a report. It'll work itself out if I stay up all night. Oh, hey. You wanna stop in and grab Kibiki's no uh, new book? You've been dying to read it, right? And his place is on the way too. Oh, yes, please. Right this way, then, madame. Oh, sweet, illustrious madame. Naho's house was literally on the way home from me, or rather, Mr. Kibiki's house, since there, since that's where she's been staying for the la for last little while. Due to various circumstances, Naho had been commuting to school from here rather than living with her parents. Supposedly, she moved in to study under Mr. Kibiki like his Padawan, <laughs> The Padawan of Catawam. <laughs> she was always willing to go the extra mile, and I always admired that about her. Kibiki, I'm home. Tadayamas. Welcome back. Not not too cold out, I trust. Look at this fuckboy. You can tell you can tell he's a super fuckboy because he has the one strand died. 
Oh, hello. You must be... I was nervous as he looked me over, but he had very kind eyes. And it... that's kind eyes to you? Really? That's kind eyes? That That's what you classify as kind... Mm, they're a little too narrow. My man's up to something. I don't trust him. And man, he was... <laughs> and man, was he ever hot. Like old school Japanese style hot. Good evening. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Sayaka Oe. I'm assuming it's pronounced Oe. It's probably not. I bowed quickly to Mr. Kibiki, f uh, and Mr. Kibiki flashed a gentle smile. I'm Kibiki. Thanks for always looking after Naho. She talks about you quite a lot. I'm so glad. I've also heard a lot about you, Mr. Kibiki. Heh. <laughs> a laundry list of failed publications, no doubt. Oh no, that's not true at all. Hey, Sayaka, since you're here, why don't you stay for tea or something? Kibiki brought some really amazing second flush dar darjil darjeeling. What the fuck? I don't even know what the hell that is. Hmm, well, I kind of felt like I was being put on the spot. I mean, it was already late, and I doubt Mr. Kibiki was too keen on playing host. You don't mind, do you, Kibiki? Of course not. Though, though do you best give your family a call and let them know where you are. You wouldn't want to worry them after all. Thank you very much. I hope this isn't too much trouble. Please, make yourself at home. Dude's got a killer smile. It was easy to see why Naho's so into him. Alright then, come on in. Okay. In front of Kibiki, Naho returned to her usual cool self. After calling home, I passed nervously, I passed nervously through the living room, feeling a bit like I was imposing. But what a living room it was! The furnishing were a fashion of Japan. Was a fashion? Wow! A fusion of Japanese and Vietnamese styles, and everything just looked really posh and inviting. Oh, posh, tip top! This place is incredible, incredible. Go ahead and leave your bag over there, and please get comfortable. I'll put on the Darjil Darjil. I'm not even gonna. Whatever. I'll put on the tea. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Kibiki. It's no problem at all. I was looking to drink some myself, in fact. I can use some tea right now. Kibiki then disappeared into another room, his smile never once fading. A total dreamboat all the way. Now host gesture for me to sit, so I so I cautiously cautiously? Yeah. So I cautiously plopped myself down on an expensive looking sofa. Whoa, I'm sinking. Sayaka, just relax, okay? I'm gonna go. I'm going to go hit the hit the little girl's room. I couldn't even say that. Okay, I'll be napping here when you get back. Go for it. Naho began walking out of the room, clunking at my sw uh, clunking. What? Chuckling. My bad. Clunking. What the fuck? It's not even an L in there. I think you're gonna get your responsibly drunk tonight. Be safe. I mean. I mean. Let the record go as and show you that I recommend not to do it. But if you are going to do it, be safe. <laughs> Naho began walking out of the room, chuckling at my swiftly sinking form. Swift, swiftly? Swiftly sinking form. Mere moments later, I thought. Uh, mere moments later, though. That sure caught me by surprise. I turned in the direction of the scream. Concerned. God! Tachki! Lock the damn, uh, lock the damn door when you're in there. <laughs> she pulled a, she pulled a king of the hill. She said, she said, oh man, I'm about to bust. I'm sorry. <laughs> he opens the door. He's like, oh, good Lord. Sorry. I thought this was the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> I heard the door slam shut with incredible force. So that was the infamous Mr. Tun, uh, Tun, uh, God. Takuchi, huh? No love lost between those two, it seems. The nerve of that guy! Having peeked out to check on Naho, Mr. Kibiki again withdrew his wide-eyed face into the kitchen, laughing softly. I swear I could look at him all day. Well, technically you can't look at him all day because it's nighttime now. Haha. -ha. Look at her smug-ass face! Man, you people are so gonna die! <laughs> Jesus! I feel bad for you. Trying to savor each single droplet of the deep crimson liquid in my cup, I slowly and carefully embelled, embelled, 
Imbibed? Mm hmm. Imbibed. But I don't even know. You know what? I'm not a scholar. Don't question me. The tea that was placed before me. Whatever blend Kibiki had brewed bore a flavor unlike anything else like I ever tasted. Ah, it's wonderful. Excellent. I'm glad you like it. It's got such a complex taste and aroma. I always thought all black tea was the same, but oh, how dare you? How dare you think that? Oh, you skank. But then, <laughs> uh, but then at my house, we only have the kind that comes in tea bags. There's nothing wrong with tea that comes in bags. It's gotten quite good these days, in fact. This is just the way I'm used to drinking it. It really is delicious, Mr. Kibiki. Isn't it about time for you to go home, Tatsuki? Oh, come on, Naho. Don't be like that. <laughs> Tatsuki may, uh, may have been her elder, but he was completely outmatched by Naho. Those two had a pretty fascinating relationship all their own. Actually, you know, I do have a rental video to return by the end of the day, so I guess I should probably be leaving after all. More porn? <laughs> oh shit, she called him out. <laughs> Wait, no? No, it's not porn. No! No, I'm not looking at titties. You can't... No. That's the face of a man who looks at nothing but titties. He's looking at them right now. You can't tell because his eyes are closed, but he's staring. He's staring. And she knows what's up. <laughs> That's why she's smiling. <laughs> no? <laughs> what do you mean by more? Anyways, if you'll excuse me. Tech... <laughs> what? Techno break? <laughs> oh, techno break. Death by fat. Oh, God. Now her face, Mr. Tatsuki, and posed as if she were shooting a beam of light at him, like some kind of legally unnamed masked superhero. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> that, that is, that is copyright. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Kibiki. You too, Naho. Actually, I'm gonna go to school tomorrow, so no, you won't. Oh, really? That's a surprise. You just keep on keeping on, Tatsuki. Rock those 29 years of... And, and substantial accomplishments. Man, you're ruthless. Tatsuki staggered to the door and vanished into the outside world, utterly defeated. Watching from, watching from next to me, Mr. Kibiki simply waved his hand and smiled. Man, those people are gonna die. <laughs> hmm, I should probably be going too. Thank you very much for your hospitality. My pleasure. I'm sorry we couldn't offer you anything more. Oh, please. Well, Tachiki's gone. He's got a pretty good head start. And, oh wow. I'm having like a moment here. He's got a pretty good head start. So I don't think you have to worry about running into him. Wow, you are ruthless. You're welcome back. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. Please, be careful on your way home. Thank you so much for everything. Have a good night. I stepped out from Kibiki's loving home. And Naho walked me to the corner. The air felt crisp and cool against my cheeks. It's been, uh, it had been a positively lovely day all around. Before parting ways, I lent Naho one of the twinkle CDs I had in my bag. Then we hugged, and I began the short walk back to my own house. Thank you, Naho. This, ca uh, this case you discovered with Heavenly Host Elementary is absolutely remarkable. If, if our investigation bears fruit... This could very well turn the world of occult research on its head. It's too good to pass up. Hmm? What's going on here? Daddy's not breathing. She had a nightmare? Just a dream? Huh? I have to write this down. Sacred Ground Investigation File 02. K Prefects are Heavenly Host Elementary. Currently under investigation. Further progress. Encounter fierce spiritual resistance while simply researching the Shinozaki estate. Right side of, uh, right side of body paralyzed. Left eardrum ringing. Orbs visible in, photog in photographs. Influence confirmed. Severed, severe dizziness, nausea, 
blood BM experience symptoms pres uh, persist for weeks. After all that, you're still gonna wait. You're still gonna investigate after all that, and unrelenting nightmares on top of it all. Oh God, this really is way too dangerous for them. Kibiki and Tachiki don't know how to protect themselves from spirits. They shouldn't go at all. You fucking with some spirits. You don't know what you're messing with. <laughs> I'll just say right now, you don't know what you're messing with. That's the moment where you get up and you say, thank you for your hospitality, Mr. Ghost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna promptly fuck off and never come back. I'll make sure that you stay here and nobody will fuck with your remains. So, so if anything bad happens, please do not come after me. My name is Naho Sanoki. I travel the country investigating reports of haunted locations. Uh, I, I, I can't, I'll be honest, I don't even know what that word is. I don't know. I don't know. Something. <laughs> Clients' fears and doing whatever I can to help them. Assuaging? Assu 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 mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Recently, strange and unpleasant things have begun happening to me. I've been investigating a certain haunted ground for the last month and encountered a malevolent, a malevolent will more powerful than anything I've ever experienced. I attributed this to the paper doll I brought back with me of the sort commonly used in curses. No doubt a bad idea, but invaluable for research. So you cursed yourself for re- you're fucking crazy. This is the reason I hesitated when Sayaka asked me to be on the radio show at the restaurant earlier. Ghost stories can eventually provoke the spirits involved in them. Then just say no. What the fuck? If you know you're cursed, don't even take don't even take the fucking chance to piss off a ghost. Don't even do it. That's just that's just hell nah written all over it. I was afraid that whatever ent whatever entity had latched onto me might have might have some negative effects on Saika as well. Fortunately, aside from wreaking havoc on my on my cycle, oh god, on my physiology, the spirit d didn't seem to be affecting those around me in any way. Not yet. If you could just keep it under control, I was certainly, I was certainly, wow, that's not even a word that's there. I was certain my appearance on Sayaka's radio show would go off without a hitch. Hmm, Kibiki? I'd gone to the kitchen for a glass of water and thought I had a note thought I hadn't noticed on my way down. I saw Kibiki fast asleep on the living room sofa as I headed back. Kibiki? You're gonna catch a cold down here, you know? Kibiki? Sound sleep. Oh, Kibiki. You're so cute. Why is everybody just, like, on this man's dick? <laughs> like, for real, can we point that out? He should... This man just must... He must be dripping 100% of the time. Kibiki had pulled an all-nighter last night, so I was pretty sure he'd, he'd sleep well into the afternoon. There we go. Nice warm blanket for you. Sweet dreams. Spirit research is a decay- Wow. I can't even fucking say the word. Spirit research is a decided- Decidedly- Oh, God damn it. Whatever. Dangerous feel numerous people had warned me not to get into- Not to get into deep. So why did I do it? For Kibiki, of course. If Kibiki could make progress on his occult novel through my research, if he could succeed in all his endeavors, then no price would be too high, I felt. For his respect and admiration, I happily sacrifice anything and more. Yeah, you're crazy, girl. Yeah, it's definitely too dangerous to send Kibiki and Tachiki to Heavenly Host by themselves. I have to make sure I go with them. I tucked Kibiki in and returned to my room, realizing he'd still be asleep when I left for school. I decided to write him a note. Just as I was concerned for him, Kibiki was worried about putting me in danger as well, stating his prior intent to go to Heavenly Host with Tachiki instead. I was so flattered by his consideration that I just didn't have the heart to lecture him about how ludicrously bad an idea that was. Let's see, to my dear mentor. Oh, to my beloved mentor, I love you oh so much. I will die for you. The time is now. What? The time is now? Oh god. I didn't even know it said 11. Sorry. I thought she was just like, the time is now. <laughs> the time is now 11 in the morning. Here's the latest news of the day. The body of a schoolgirl was discovered in the plaza near the escalators at the southeast exit to Tokyo Shinjuku Station. 
Good morning, Naho. I wanted to talk to you about the Tenji urban legend you found. These are a lot of words. <laughs> I really think it may be a bit too dangerous to bring you along, so Tachiki and I should probably go by ourselves. Huh? She's not here. Come to think of it, she did say she's gonna go to school today, which is rather unlucky, her, which is rather unlike her. As usual, everything's in perfect order in this room, like night and day compared to my studies. Hmm? What's this? A note? To my dear mentor- Oh, to my dear mentor! For you, I'll go to any lengths, really? She's really, like, on her knees for this man. Based on my findings from old Tenshiki town records, I feel more confident that it is possible to return from the school using the escape plan we discussed. But you and Tachiki don't have the ability to resist spirits like I do. It would be far too dangerous in there if you just- if it was just the two of you. So when I get home from school today, I'll be joining you in performing the charm of Sachiko Shinozaki. I don't hold out much hope for our success, but if it works, you're seriously gonna get the scoop to the end of, uh, to end all scoops. If I can help make lighting strike a third time for you with your editorial department, then you'll totally owe me dinner, Naho. Thank you, Naho. But I really can't allow you to put yourself in danger like that. So I'm gonna go get myself killed instead. I know the escape plan. I'm gonna go with my man. She's like, listen, guys. I know we're occultists and shit, and everything we say out of our mouths are con is kind of bullshit. But hear me out, though. Hear me out. You don't know how to resist spirits. You're. We literally talked about going into a different realm. We're going into the shadow realm. Don't go by yourself. Go with me. We might have a chance. If you don't go with me, you're definitely not going to have a chance. And he's like, nah, it's fine. It's okay. I got it. Like, why would you? Why would you even? Why would you even? I know the escape plan. I'm going to go with trust the old, with trust the old Tachiki. You're going to wait for us here. I guess I should write her a note to that effect. Good morning, Mr. Kibiki. Are you awake? Well... He's full of spirits today. Perfect, then. Let's not waste any more time. I went to the school as soon as I finished my morning recording session, but by then it was already lunchtime, and Naha had skipped class as, as usual. But I knew where to find her. Work may have kept her out of school most of the time, but when she did come, there was one spot she always chose for lunch. She liked to get away from the noisy classroom to eat in peace, and I knew this because, well, I did it too. This wasn't just her spot, but mine as well. We probably get into trouble if a teacher ever found us out. Uh, if a teacher ever found us there, though. See, the lock on the door leading to the school roof just happened to be broken. So, hmm, what a nice breeze, and that sunlight too. Absolutely magical. There was a fence between the buildings to prevent students from falling, but it wasn't very high, so getting over it was a fairly simple task. Alright, that's just fan service. That's just fan service. Alley oop! I crossed the gap, mind mindful of any stray guess any stray gust of wind. The best <laughs> well, I couldn't even couldn't even read. The best shade was on the side, so as long as I didn't look down, it was well worth the effort. And there she is. Oh, no. As expected, she was nestled right into her usual spot. The sight was positively pic picturesque. A high school girl all tucked away on the school roof. Nose, nose buried into a book with a, non with a nondescript paper dust jacket. I swear, you can, just paint, you can just paint any moment of this girl's life. And it would make a fine portrait. <laughs> Why the fuck all these bone girls kind of... Gotta put it in the bio. <laughs> we get along if you just put Jesus in our relationship. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said, no, I want to put Jesus in my life first. My fucker religion journey is personal. I don't want you to be involved in it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, the one... To me, when it comes to something like Bumble, the one that gets me every time is like, I'm looking for a nice guy who's smart and funny. And she's just a nice dude, and I'm like, you also forgot who looks like fucking Taylor Lautner or some shit. 
I'm looking for a guy who looks like Johnny Depp. Like, at least when girls are sitting there, they're like, I'm looking for my Zac Efron type. It's like, at least it's shallow, but at least they're telling the truth, right? It's like, all right, girl, you got it. <laughs> Sayaka, hey there. Sorry to have keep you out this late last night. Hope your family wasn't mad at you or anything. Nope, no problems at all. They were A-OK -okay with it. Oh, seems you trained them well. What are you implying? So hey, that book from Mr. Kibiki you lent me yesterday. Freaking awesome! Right? Didn't it just totally suck you in? That's not the only thing sucking me in. I love how... <laughs> <laughs> that was a side joke. I love how it goes on and on with the psychological descriptions of the first murder scenes. Psychological. Yeah, psychological. That protagonist is totally nuts, though. Yeah, I wish I had been reading it in bits and pieces during my work commute, though. Kind of took, kind of took away from the tension, but I can't wait to read any. I can't wait to read more. All the shit you see is just Pam looking for her gym. Yeah, that too. <laughs> like, I already know we ain't compatible because you're cool with secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> and all the shit you just want to watch with me just ain't gonna work. Yep. It's always something like that. Right? I ain't gonna talk to you unless you're fucking six foot two. And it's like, alright, so I gotta be like 30% of the population. Got you. <laughs> Yeah, just keep, just keep at it. It's gonna blow your mind. Oh yeah, and that Twinkle CD you let me? To die for, seriously. Really? Awesome. I bet you recognized a bunch of those songs from the concert, right? You should check out some of their music videos sometime too. Maybe I got, <laughs> maybe I got one on my phone that I can show you now. Nope, guess not. I'll, I'll have to give it to you. I have to give you a rain check on that. I wonder if there are any good fan-made ones. Oh, good call. If they are, I totally want to see. The bell? One already? Well, I got an appointment I can't miss, I'm afraid. Guess I'll see you after school for recording. It's at 5.30 in East Shinjuku, so we should probably meet at 4 behind the school gate. Okay. You said behind the gate. Really? What are you, five? Naho was cool as a cucumber. Just like always, today's recording was sure to be a blast. This one's persistent. I'll give her that. Blood? Really? Is this curse honestly affecting me all that way down to the cellular level? Seriously, how long are you planning on haunting me? That's the moment you take a rain check until, like, shit molds over. You start coughing out blood. You're like, <laughs> You're like, fuck. <laughs> You're like, nah. Meanwhile, she's sitting there, she's like, nah, it's all good. It's fine. This is normal. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's installment of Sayaka... Oh, God. Sayaka always love braver. Love braver? What? The night doesn't start till I pour my heart out. So, let's get pouring, shall we? You'll never guess where I went today. I went to school to meet up with a friend, actually. It was the first time in a while I could just kick back and relax. We talked forever, like forever. But of course, the real reason I went was to learn stuff and junk, of course. They're laughing at me in the control booth. What's going on in there, fellas? Huh? The thought of Miss Oi actually going to school is hilarious. Hey, come on. I go to school, I do. I'm a high school student just like everybody else my age. Don't laugh. You trying to say I'm too old? Too cool for school? Seriously, stop it. You're gonna give me a complex. Some days you just can't win, you know? All I wanted to do was to say how great school is and look at what happened. I'm a laughing stock. Well, I'm glad you guys are having fun at least. Let's enjoy our half hour together talking uh, tonight to the fullest. Braver! Let's see. That has got to be the shit that I hate the most about the dating world. Somehow, I got <laughs> somehow I got attached to masculinity as a 5'7 certified army gunner with 340 bench, 25 deadlift, and 400 squ 405 squats. 
gives a single fuck about the height as it implies to my masculinity. Yeah. I said too, I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Most of the time, I find most of the time, uh, the type, like, I'm not trying to generalize women or anything, but the type of women who do that are like the Instagram models, the one who put their Instagrams and Snapchat in their fucking bios, and you're like, you're like, listen, do you, but like, bitch, I'm not gonna fuck, you know, no offense to women out there, but let's be honest, bitch, I'm not gonna fucking follow you on goddamn Snapchat or Instagram because you look cute and you got like fake lips and fake nose <laughs> and your whole face is fake. <laughs> it's like, you do you, I do me. And hopefully you don't end up with a guy who's gonna beat you around like you're his punching bag or something. <laughs> Psycho on air personality was, uh, what? Psycho's on air personality was incredible. I was absolutely listening to a pro at work and she had me hooked on the moment she, the show began. Okay, that wraps up the intro. Miss Sinoki, please head to the booth. On my way. It was my turn now as a guest speaker. When I entered the recording booth, Sayaka sat facing her mic and waved over to me. Hey, a girlfriend. She's like, hey, 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 how's it going, girl? <laughs> I returned Sayaka's cheery smile and sat myself in front of the guest mic that had been prepared for me. But something felt wrong. Very, very wrong. What the fuck? <laughs> they gave me kind of a heart attack, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. Also, I wanna point out, for some reason, like, the audio is, like, very low this time around. Usually it's, like, super loud. What's going on with that? I'll, I'll put it up a little bit more. Is she supposed to be there? I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put the sound up by like I'm putting, I'm gonna put it there. Hopefully it's not too loud. Well I guess <laughs> what do you mean is she supposed to be there? She's a ghost. I'm assuming alright, so this is one this is Sachiko, straight off. I already know that. Because I played the first game. And um I'm guessing Sachiko is the one who's like haunting uh haunting Naho because uh, she went to the she went to her family estate, I think? Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. I just felt dizzy for a second. Hmm. I'm gonna drop out. Boys wanna talk, but I'll keep you low. So you get alert. Okay, that's cool, man. Do what you gotta do. Well, the camera's on you now. So where's your cutest face, okay? That's right. Uh, Roger that. This child was the daughter of, of the, of the mint. Wow. Couldn't read for a moment. This child was the daughter mentioned in my research on the Shinozaki family. This was Sachiko. She was the one who attached herself to me. Her eyes are black and hollow with no discernible pupils at all. She sat utterly motionless, but I knew she was watching me, waiting, biding her time. My hair stood on end. Blood rushed to my head and bile, and bile surged into my throat. The Shinozaki curse was far too powerful. I couldn't surpass it. And it was clear Sayaka couldn't see her. This was bad. I had to be careful not to let Sachiko interfere with the recording. Okay, we're back. Start with the listener mail. Alright, folks. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The topic of this week's Try to Do a Thing workshop is... Oof. Can I go home now, please? <laughs> what do you mean, no? Come on, be a sport. Guess there's nothing I can do about it. This week's topic is, that's right, try to tell a scary story. Yikes. Man, I told you all I didn't want to do was this one. So why did you guys send me so many responses? We actually received the record amount. Far too many to tackle by myself, so I've invited a guest to help me out. Hey, hey, don't run the applause yet. I haven't even said who it is. Or has anyone al has everyone already guessed? Because it's totally who you think it is. The pro with the know-how, spirit investigator extraordinaire, as beautiful as she is, brainy. This high school para what the fuck paranormalist paranormal oh god paranormal sis I can't say the word fuck me. Naho Sanoki. 
Naho, Naho, however the fuck you pronounce your name. Give it up for Naho. Good evening. Thanks so much for coming. No, thank you. It's an honor to have been invited. Oh. How about that, everyone? She's mellow, so modest. Isn't she just the bee's knees? Naho and I actually go to the same school. We're even in the same class. Isn't that right? We hang out a lot, in fact. Some of, you clever, uh, some of you clearly knew that, and have been outright demanding that Naho make a guest appearance for quite some time now. Well, your wish is my command. My pleasure, in fact. I think I may have been more thrilled to have her here than you guys. Anyways, give today's theme, Naho. Uh, given today's theme, Naho seemed, the per seemed to be the perfect guest. So care to, care to get us started with some choice words for any evil spirits that may be listening? Oh, fuck. <laughs> You shouldn't be doing that! Uh, tremble on the border between this life and the next, under my seven stars. And that's what I'm talking about. Those ghosties have got to be shivering in their, in, in their ethereal, wow. Ugh. In their ethereal booties after hearing something like that. So, let's get right to the listeners' letters, shall we? Here's a scary story from one Junpei Nagi of M-City in Tokyo. In my experience, adverse, adverse spiritual manifestations from my research had always been easy enough to keep at bay with my powers, but this one was different. For this energy to be completely visible in broad daylight, i never seen anything like it. Uh, this was bad. My head was splitting, but the cameras were rolling, so to speak, so I had at least kept my, uh, keep myself from coughing up blood again. Naho is grabbing her skirt tightly with both hands. <laughs> oh man, now we switch to her perspective. This is pretty good. <laughs> Naho is grabbing her skirt, uh, her skite, her skirt tightly with both hands. Muscles completely rigid. My my, was she actually getting nervous? How unlike her. I kind of grinned in t uh in just wow. I kind of grinned internally a bit at the sight of Naho acting all girly and scared. It was adorable, as I like to say. But I still had a show to host. Thunk, I slid open the door. Wait, what? Thunk, I slid open the door, and there before me I saw... A pair of eyes staring... Oh, okay, she's reading the story. I was so confused. A pair of eyes staring, staring intently right onto my very soul. Wow, this is so super freaky. How about it, Naho? This has got to be fake, right? Mr. Miz Mr. Mizuno of Kaito is just pulling our leg, right? He may be, but with one, but only this evidence to go on, it's hard to judge the authenticity of the claim. So, what you're saying is, it might actually be real? That is a possibility, yes. Oh no, please. Actually, I've noticed something even more frightening since the segment began. Naho, your focus keeps drifting over to the corner of the booth. Uh, oh, oh well. Don't tell me there's somebody there, is there? Oh, I'm getting chills. Do we have another guest with us today? An uninvited one? Please say no. No, no, no. We're fine. Oh, oh. Did you? You basically just, you don't exist, the ghost. And now the ghost is like, oh, really? <laughs> I don't exist. This seemed the perfect twist to up the tension of the segment. But the look on Naho's face suggests I might have been on some, I might have been onto something, which is terrifying. Her guest spot on this show, uh, her guest spot on the show, may have just been fun and games, but I knew Naho was about as well versed in spiritual matters as they come. This gave her a great deal of confidence, but unbeknownst to me, the confidence was beginning to unravel all around her. She was in a, she was in way over her heels, and by the time she would come to realize this, it would be too late, not just for her. Great work, everyone. That's a wrap. The recording ended without incident, as far as anybody knew. Psycho tossed a piece of chocolate into her mouth that she seemed to be ha uh, that she seemed to have brought with her. She was as casual and relaxed as can be. So out with it. Did you see something in the booth or not? No, I didn't see anything. 
I glanced back into the recording booth. Sashiko's spirit had disappeared a little while ago. I felt it was best to act as if nothing had happened, and successfully managed to steer the topic of conversation elsewhere until... What the? Hmm? What's wrong? Was someone talking out there during the recording? No? Why would any of us make a rookie mistake like that? You wouldn't be able to hear us from inside the booth anyways. There's something on the tape, though. Sounds like a voice to me. Huh? Where? Here, during this exchange. Mr. Mizuno of Kaito is just pulling our legs, right? Hmm, he may be, but with only this evidence to go on. I'm only hearing those two. You don't hear a third voice? Did I just say voice? A voice? Why I say it like that? Ugh. Mr. Mizuno of Kaito is just pulling our legs, right? He may be, but with only this evidence to go on. Right there. After Ms. Sanaki says he may be. Mr. Mizuno of Kaito is just pulling our legs, right? He may be, but with only with only this evidence to go on. Pulling our legs, right? He may be, but with only this evidence to go on. Oh god, there's a voice. It says, I'm watching you, right? He may be, but with only... What? You gotta be kidding me! It's in the recording for sure! That's so creepy. Is this for real? An actual EVP? Hey, what's going on? Oh my god, is the guy having like a fucking seizure? Hey, what's the matter? Pull yourself together. Suddenly, the director behind the uh, be began to clutch at his throat and thrash around. His face was bright red and his mouth frothed over as he struggled to breathe. Hold him down. He's gonna knock over everything and hurt himself. I yes, sir. Is... is it over? What was that? Some kind of seizure? Oh crap, he's not breathing. What? God. Call an ambulance, quickly! He needs a CPR! He needs a CPR? He needs CPR! Okay. Come on, keep it together, man. What the hell's going on? Send the guests home. We're done. Saika's usually... Saika's usually smiling, uh... uh wow. I gotta take a drink of this water. That's what's gotta happen right now. That's the last bit of water that I have. Throat is getting very dry. Psycho is usually smiling, uh, count, count and stance. What? Smiling, count, I don't even, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't know. Psycho's usually smiling, count and stance has been replaced with a thin, with a thin mouth and a cold sweat. There was no doubt about it. This was the influence of the spirit. And it must have been absolutely terrifying for her co-workers who never had in con who never had contact with the spirit world before. I regret repairing on this program. Repairing? Appearing. My bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I guess I shouldn't have come. Oh, don't be silly. You did great. They managed to, uh, res- What? Resicate? Resicate? Resicate. That's not the word. That's not how you say that. Resuscitate. That's the word. For some reason I couldn't... My mind wouldn't even comprehend it. They managed to resuscitate the director, too, at the hospital. And when we can cut out the voice... Uh, and we can cut out the voice for the broadcast, but honestly, I say we leave it in. I mean, it's kind of lunch, it's kind of a lucky break. What do you think about it? I'm really grateful for your help today. I owe you one, so if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Oh, and as for... Uh, fucking... I, I can't say those French words. As for the restaurant, how about next week? Heh. <laughs> On the way home, Naho finally smiled. Glad to see she still had it in her. I need to put on a happy face myself, too. I was afraid if, it's, if I seemed too gloomy, it would bring Naho down. 
and she hadn't done anything wrong. I had to let her know how grateful I was and try to bring her spirits back up. The two of us parted ways on a corner near our houses and I needed to stop in at the convenience store for some groceries. See you later. Thanks again. You too. Good night. I've never before felt such a strong pres uh uh fucking pre pre present oh god persist I can't even say the fucking word persistence persist pre let's just say presence there you go <laughs> I never before felt such a strong present spiritual wow persistent 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 that's the word why am I so dumb tonight I never before felt such a such a strong persistent spiritual presence that's a tongue twister. I had a considerable amount of power within me, and usually it was more than enough to disperse any malicious wills that dare, that dare draw near. But even with all of my concentration, I still put Sayaka and her co-workers in grave danger. They easily could have been killed by the curse. For the sake of dear Kibiki's safety, we really should have put the kibosh on this entire investigation into the Shinozaki family line, at, uh, Shinozaki family line a lot sooner. But it wasn't too late to call it off. As far as I knew, I was gonna pull out. I was going to pull out from the Heavenly Host Elementary case altogether. I made up my mind. I should probably undergo a traditional spirit exorcism as soon as possible. Hmm. It was past 9:30, so it had been dark out for hours already. If there wasn't a single light on in Kibiki's house. Kibiki. No signs of life. Somehow the whole house felt larger and emptier than it ever had before. Keep it, Key. Keep it, Key. You sleeping? I peeked into his study, but he wasn't there. Nor was he anywhere else. The house was deserted. Now, Keep Key's meetings for work was always held at irregular times, so this wasn't unprecedented or anything. But the atmosphere inside just felt different somehow. There was this particular, particular, peculiar silence, as if no one has ever lived here in the first place. I'm watching you. Something just seemed very, very wrong. It was like someone was watching me, staring at me. Uh? Finally, I found a note on my desk. Not the one I left for Kibiki this morning, but a response written in a familiar scrawl. Dear Naho, thank you for your concern. I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself if I exposed you to any more danger on my behalf, however. Tatsuki and I have gone to Heavenly Host Elementary. I have noted the way, I noted the way back, so please don't worry. I'll return safe and sound. And if we're successful, let's all go out for a nice meal together, okay? Oh shit. Hmm. Oh, we switch over to Sayaka's perspective. All right. With the sign to mumble, I snap back to reality. Snap back to reality. Sorry, I had to. Glancing at the clock, I marveled at the fact that it was already past ten. I've been in a daze for half an hour since getting home. Craziness. Oh, what a day. My shoulders feel like they've got lead weights on them. I couldn't have brought it back with me, right? No, there was no way. I stood up, I stood up for my desk. Uh, the problem was the uniform. I couldn't really relax in it. Relax? Wow. I couldn't really relax in it. I should know better. I just needed to change. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll feel better once I get out of this uniform. I can see you. God, please. Is somebody there? Please, no. I was glad no one had seen had seen me talking to thin air like that. There was nobody else around, of course. Nothing to be afraid of. It was just my imagination. I really, really need to get out of my uniform. So once again, I started changing when... Huh? Definitely not my imagination this time. There's somebody screaming outside my window, running towards my house. What? I seriously felt like I was going to break down. Maybe I already had. Opening the curtain slowly, I peered outside to see who it was. Wait. 
Is that Naho? I couldn't see her face clearly, being on the second floor and all, but that was Naho, all right. She was crying like a mudworm, like a mudworm, like a mad woman. Why did I say mudworm? <laughs> like a mad woman. She looked awful. Sayaka! What's wrong, Naho? Naho? Sayaka, it's Kibiki. Kibiki crossed over. Okay, just calm down, Naho. Tell me what happened. Where's Mr. Kibiki? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's all my fault. If Kibiki were to die in there. This was the first time I've ever seen her so incoherent. I spoke slowly and gently, trying to... Trying to... Uh, trying my best... Wow. Trying my best to calm her down. Naho, please, just tell me what happened. Let me help you. Start from the beginning. I, uh... I want you to come back with me, right now. What? Please, I'm begging you. Tears were streaming down her face. This was a side of Naho I never even imagined could exist. There had to be a reason she was so desperate. I agreed to follow her back to Kibiki's house, if only out of concern for her well-being. Sachiko ever after. Those who perform this ritual can cross over to Heavenly Host Elementary and curse a cursed school sealed outside our world, outside time and space. This is a lo <coughs> It's a locus of powerful energy. And the F and the effect it had on me thus far had been disturbing enough that I've decided to abandon my investigation. But before I could convey that to Kibiki, he crossed over without me, taking only Tachiki for backup. So please, Sayaka, you're my only hope at this point. Will you come with me to Heavenly Host so I can rescue Kibiki? I didn't really get any of what she was saying. Heavenly Host Elementary, a cursed school. And this was all the rescue. And this was all to rescue Kibiki. What was in there exactly that he needed rescuing from? The one thing I didn't understand. Oh, the one thing I did understand was that I. I would be accompanying Naho to some unsafe, unfamiliar spiritual world. I couldn't just casually agree to go with her. So this place, I'd be going with you, is dangerous then. I scare easily, you know. Please, I can't perform the ritual by myself. You're the only person I can count on. And I swear I'll protect you, no matter what. Her face was the most, her face was the most dishe disheveled I've ever seen it. And she was practically begging. I knew two sides of this girl, her cool and collected, her cool and collected professional persona, and her cat to my master. But this panic depression felt neither of them. Well, felt fit neither of them. The words I spoke to her following our recording session suddenly popped into my head. I owe you one, so if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Kibiki. I took one more look at Naho's tear-stained face, and just knew I couldn't turn away from her in this time of need. Naho, do you really promise to protect me? Uh-huh. A ray of hope lit up, lit up Naho's face like a flower in bloom, and I knew I made the right decision. Alright then, I'm in. What are friends for, after all? Sayaka. Thank you, Sayaka. I just couldn't bear to see her cry like that. A face as cute as hers deserved to wear a smile at all times. We'll be out for a while, though, right? Mind if I run back home first and take care of some things before we go? Okay, I'll be waiting for you here, but naked. Not a good idea. You'll catch your death of cold. Anyways, I'll be back. Well, as long as Kibiki's over there, the larger the sample size for his research, the better. This is for you, man. The Shinozaki estate, we don't need that place anymore. If he's gonna leave me here to spread the curse for him, then fine. That's just what I'll do. No hesitation, no backing down. My blog should do nicely. Let's see. In this world, there is nothing worse than parting ways with a dear friend. Some may say it's sweet sorrow. Oh, almost forgot the subject line. Sachiko and the Ever After- Wait, no. How about Sachiko Ever After? Perfect. Here's hoping for lots of hits. Mom, I need to head out. 
Not wanting to worry her, I told her a little white lie, suggesting that I had another recording session tonight. I'd be going to late sessions practically every night for a while now, so it seems the perfect excuse. And sure enough, she bought it. You certainly are a hard worker, Sayaka. Just make sure to keep your energy out, uh, up out there. Don't get so busy that you let your blood sugar drop. Hmm. She handed me a small piece of emergency chocolate. This was like a tradition with her. She always gave me one when I left to show her support. And it's always reminded me that I was loved. This one, in, in peculiar, was bringing tears to my eyes. I must have been more scared than I thought. I'll be home as soon as I can. Thanks. Knock him dead, sweetie. Or someone's gonna knock me dead, all right. Sachiko, we beg of you. Sachiko, we beg of you. You said it twice, right? In your head? Yep. Okay, then. It's time to pull this thing apart. Make sure you use your nails... And don't let go. Got it. One, two, three. Something impossible was happening. We performed the ritual just as Naho had instructed. Then the floor just split open and swallowed us whole. Was this a dream? Was I hallucinating? It sure felt real, though. It felt like I was being dragged into hell. My vision quickly went bright white, and my consciousness seemed to fade black. And then... I felt dust or sand filling my mouth, and I sprang to my feet, choking. Wh what is this? Where am I? Naho. I was in a cold, dark room. It was damp and clammy, and I felt very much, li and it felt very much like a cave. Was this heavenly host elementary Naho was telling me about? Naho, Naho. Wrecked with apprehension, wrecked with apprehension, I tried raising my voice, but barely had one to raise. I looked around, but didn't see Naho anywhere, and there was no response. God, this can't be real, can it? I wanted to go home, to forget this place existed, but then I realized I never asked Naho how to cross back over. Without her, I was stuck here. So that was my top priority then. I absolutely had to find Naho. Excuse me, I had a little hiccup there. I'm sure she had a I'm sure she had accounted for. I'm sure she had accounted for the possibility that we wind up in different spots once we get here. But as long as I could track her down soon, I knew everything would work out. I stepped forward slowly and carefully and took a closer look at my surroundings. Search mode. If I get a fucking jump scare, I'm gonna start crying. Huh. Alright, well first of all, before we search anything... Been reading so goddamn much, we didn't even save the fucking game. There we go. How do I go back? Alright, cool. Uh, maybe I can use this to get up? How do I... How do I look at something? How do I confirm that I'm looking at something? Is it... Oh no, that's the map. Oh, the map! Can I even get out? I can get out? Oh yeah, I can. Sweet. Okay. Nothing to look around here for. So we have hall- DEATH ROOM! Oh, fuck that! <laughs> DEATH ROOM. Boys room, girls room. Okay, what do we have? Body pool. Body pool? Is that what I think it is? Is that just a- Is that just a, a room with, with nothing but bodies in it? What is this? What am I? Am I hearing things? That's a child's voice, isn't it? Maybe this really is an elementary school after all. It's very quiet. I'm afraid if I like up the sound. 
that it might make everything else louder. But like, you can hear someone singing. That's weird. Let's just keep it moving. Don't think about it. Don't think about it, just keep going. Oh, it's getting louder. No more. God, what is this place? Where even am I? I don't think I should go this way no more. Dude, I don't... Get me the fuck out of here. What is this body pool shit? The door is sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Oh no. Oh no. Well, that's locked off. I'm afraid to turn around and go back. I might get caught by something. Oh no. I should have just went into the death room. Let's head let's head to the boys room. Let's do that. We can make it. Huh? The lights flickered, and I could swear I saw something up on the path ahead. Hopefully just my eyes playing trick on me, please. Is somebody there? Oh, it's one of the evil spirits. Go fuck yourself. Huh? Oh. It was just an evil spirit. Well, I'll just ignore it then. It's sealed firmly shut. There's no way to open it. Okay. I thought I heard someone singing again. Oh, the girls' room is open. Is this the bathroom? Am I in, like, a cave? There's a bathroom here. No matter how I look at it, nothing about this place seems like an elementary school in any way. But there was lights on the ceiling and support beams to prevent cave-ins. So it is certainly- so it- So it certainly wasn't a natural formed cave either. I mean, there was even a door- an indoor pumping- oh wow. Can't even speak. I mean, there was even indoor plumbing down here. Is that a fucking- is that a dead body in the corner? What is that? Is that a skull? That's a skeleton. No, thank you. Actually, I didn't have to go, but there's a limit to how dirty and disgusting a bathroom stall can get before I just refuse to, clo to close myself in there. Guess I just have to hold it. Oh, look at that body just peeking out the corner. We're just gonna ignore that. We're just gonna ignore you. I'm not gonna ignore you. You got something for me, don't you? Your skeletal remains here. It's a small child. Maybe she was hiding. There's an antech attached to her jacket. Res uh, Renaissance Elementary School. Hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> Guess it's time for me to head to the death room. Oh, fuck this. Wait, is there any way to stop my progress? No, there's not. I don't think there is. The death room. I probably should explore it more. Maybe I could find, like, a charm or something. Hi, death room. It's sealed. Okay. Oh, fuck me. I'm actually really creeped out by this. Because <laughs> there's nothing. Never been here before. Fuck you! Oh my god! <laughs> Yo! That's not funny! I just wanna point out something real quick. I just wanna point out Stop. I gotta take my headphones off real quick. I just wanna point out something. So to the left of me, I have my phone sitting, right? And then my phone lit up, cause like something was gonna no notify me. The moment it lit up, the voices start, and it start from the left side of me. So as I went to look for my phone, I heard a fucking voice just coming from that direction. And it just... just got me. 
I could hear the voices of children who seemed to be in pain or distress. Oh, the darkening is gonna get me. How am I doing? I'm already at 21%. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that noise. Get the hell out of here. Just get out of here. Just go. Just go. There's another corner in the hallway over there. I should have never looked at the skeletal remains. What's in this dead end over here? Is it my death? Oh, fuck that noise. <laughs> Get the hell out of here with that. There's a recently deceased corpse here. Her hands are outstretched as if she was trying desperately, uh, desperately to dig her way through the wall. There's a student's ID name tag on her uniform. Oh, so that's just what that is? Just getting ID tags? Alright. Alright, I didn't put up my darkening as much as I thought it would. Okay. I'm surprised I'm not finding no, like, secret charms on these motherfuckers. Like, oh, you have a charm to ward off spirits now. I can hear a children laughing. Oh, it's getting closer. Just go, just go, it's getting closer. It's getting too close. Oh, get the fuck out of here with this noise. <laughs> I have to save every time. I don't want the darkening to like take me over. I don't wanna have to like retrace my steps. All right. There's a foul-smelling rotting corpse here. Based on the uniform, it was probably a male high school student in life. It seems to have died sitting down, though it doesn't look very relaxed. There's a student ID tag on his chest. All oh, the dark. How much darkening did I get off of that? All right. Not too bad. Creeping me out though, not gonna lie. The sound design in this game is really good. Oh, that looks recent. There's a fully decomposed corpse here. She's wearing a skirt, so it seems safe to assume that it was female. Her name tag confirms uh, Sho Shobu University Middle School. Hinako, Hinako Meguri? Meguri? Me Meguri? However the fuck you pronounce that? Okay, well, I didn't mean to press that. I meant to go to the map. Alright. They're still down here, we didn't check out. Well, we checked out over here. Did I check out all the way over here? I don't think I did. Did I? No, I don't, I don't think I did. Why did the music stop? <laughs> oh, the music didn't stop. It's doing like... I can hear children calling for me. Hiding and goading me to find them. Fuck you, I don't want to find you. I want to get away from you. I'm going to put myself in a dead end. See how you like that. I can hear voices of children playing. Among the voices, I heard the sound of a door opening somewhere nearby. Nearby. The deaf room? Of course the deaf room is open. Oh, fuck. Fuck this. The deaf room is open. Right, stop it. I hear you. You want me to go to the deaf room? Jesus fucking Christ. Stop calling me out, you ghost. Here in the deaf room, where things certainly die, I didn't think this place could get any darker, but this room proved me wrong. It was completely and utterly devoid of all light. My only indication 
was to was to its size. Wow. Only indication as to its size was the blop blop sound. I'm having like another hiccup. Was the blop blop sound of a dripping wa of dripping water from somewhere inside? And based on the echo, it didn't seem too big. I was perfectly content on leaving it at that, honestly, but I couldn't because I knew Naho might have been in here, seized with fear and panic. She usually kept a cool head, sure, but I just seen what she looks like when she didn't, and it worried the hell out of me, so I had to know. Naho. No response. Not that I heard, anyways. That dripping wasn't very loud, but it echoed enough that it could convincibly obscure the sound of a person's voice. As long as I kept the door to this room open, though, the pale light of the corridor could filter in, and I'd be able to see, I'd be able to see the exit. It may not have been illuminated much, but at least I'd be able to find my way out in a pinch, so I swallowed my fear and walked into the darkness. Oh, fuck that noise. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh! God, the sound design in this... It's, it's getting to me. The sound of an insect buzzing straight in my ear. Mm, what's that smell? It stinks to high heavens. Something rotting in here? Ew, what spilled? It's all over my leg. Without thinking, I smacked my hand against my leg, as if trying to knock off whatever was stuck to it. What is this? The metallic smell was so thick that I almost couldn't breathe. Was it blood? Did I just wipe blood onto my hands? No, it couldn't be. I got a sudden itch on my thigh, so I impulsively reached down and scratched it. And in doing so, a small, a small rice-sized bead stuck, stuck the ball of my finger. But this was all consume. Uh, this was all consuming darkness. I had no idea what to tell it. Uh, what I had no idea what it was. It felt an awful lot like a grain of rice, though. Even smushing, even smushing and smearing like one when I needed it between my thumb and f and forefinger. Oh, that's just a bug. <laughs> that's just a gnat. What is this thing? Skin? From my thigh? Crap, I hope not. Huh? The lights. Oh god, what is this place? The source of the horrible smell was suddenly clear. The room was absolutely drenched, from wall to wall and ceiling to floor, the blood and viscera. How many gallons of blood must be- must have there- oh wow. How many gallons of blood must there have been to coat this entire room? And the worst part was, none of it was dry. It was all wet. It was all fresh. There were indistingu indistinguishable chunks of flesh and bone everywhere. Just what- just what kind- um, wow. Just what kinds of twisted things was this room being used for? Uh, huh? I scratched my itching thigh again with my finger and looked down at my legs, and all at once my, uh, my blood ran cold. What? A swarm of little white bugs were wriggling around on both my legs. Oh, fuck! That's what I was squishing between my fingers, but there were many, many more, and they were all also, they were also on my skirt, on my socks, even inside my shoes. Oh, fuck. Are those just maggots? I fell into a state of total panic. I threw off my shoes and began frantically brushing myself off with my arms. I grabbed the hem of my skirt and the collar of my socks and shook the hell out of them, trying to knock as many bugs off my my body as I possibly could. Huh? Stumbling around, I accidentally pleated, I accidentally planted the heel of my sock into a murky puddle of red liquid. My mind went blank with disgust. Gross, 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 gross. I can't take this anymore. Calm down, Sayaka. This was just a slaughterhouse. This was just a place where livestock was chopped up into meat. It was perfectly natural. There was nothing unusual about this room at all. The blood, the chunks of flesh, the bone, probably all just from animals. Oh, fuck that. Is she not gonna question why the lights are on? Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't look around. The darkening will arise. Oh, what's in here? They definitely want me to look in there. It's an enormous standing closet with double doors. S uh, someone my size could most likely fit inside in a pinch. Okay. 
It's absolutely soaked with blood. There's no doubt that countless living things has been killed here. Alright. What about... I guess I'm looking at the piles of blood. Filthy buckets littered the room. Each one was stuffed with reddish-black globs of meat and a quivering yellow and white liquid. And most of them... F uh, firm... Firm... What? Firmer-like bones? What? Oh, femur. Femur? Yeah, femur-like bones adorned the surface. But one of them seemed to be far more horrid stew than the others. And that's basically... And that's because one of them was full of arms, human arms, several of them, jutting out above the bucket, lip and practically waving at passerbyers. <laughs> Screams. Did I really, did I fuck myself here? Nope, I'm still at 30. All right. Screams are, str Screams are strange beasts because they basically override all sense of logic and what? Screams are strange beasts. Because they basically override all sense of logic and reason within a person's mind. Quite natural. Quite automatically in my shock, I scream. A scream forced its way out of my. Away from out. Uh, wow. Away out from inside my body. From the very pit of my stomach. My sense had become razor sharp. I could faintly hear footsteps approaching me from the hall outside the room. Oh, fuck. My stomach tightened, stopping the next scream in my throat. Well, sure of it. In the corridor just outside this room, someone or something was coming this way, and judging by the sound, it sure wasn't Naho. Another scream threatened to slip out. I quickly stifled it. The last thing I needed was to give away my position. Whoever this was was getting closer and closer. I had to act. The hallway outside was just a straight shot, so escaping the room without being seen wasn't an option. Hiding was my only hope. But hiding where? Under the blood-soaked table. Inside the cabinet. I feel like inside the cabinet is a bad idea. That's why I didn't do it last, uh, last chapter. How did we hide before? In the first game. I think we hid under the table, right? We're going under the table. Would I really be okay under the table? Not the best choice, but I guess there really isn't too, uh, too many options. Either way, I couldn't afford to hesitate at all times like this. I had to follow my instincts. Yeah, I'm following my instincts, too. Going to the table. Fortunately, the table was pretty low to the ground, so I didn't... So I did have some cover there. Nonetheless, I prayed for the footsteps to pass by without coming in. But then the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the lights in here. So I didn't honestly hold out. I didn't have, honestly hold out much hope. Oh, God. Rapidly, my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenario began flashing through my mind, and one after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in a vain attempt to calm myself down. I clenched my eyes shut and, uh, I clenched my eyes shut and willed myself to swallow any sounds that threatened to leak out. No. No, please help me. What was happening? That was the sound of a girl in pain. The man had apparently dropped someone onto the table and she was either injured or being she was either injured or being injured. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Oh shit. I couldn't hear I could hear an unearthly scream from the other side of the table above me. My body screamed my body my body became rigid. Crap. If he bent down to pick it up, he'd see me for sure. Oh, shit. Huh? He was, he was a very strange, horrifying creature. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either. And whatever he was, I was scared I was scared to death of him. On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a grotesque face and an abnormally large body. Not to mention a zombie-like uh, disposition. He was horrifying. I feared as much as my life as any human can. I was frightened, afraid, terrified. There was, there was no word strong enough. Oh shit! So I got grabbed. He, he got me. All right. 
I was feeling my arms and legs and doing everything I possibly could to break free of his grip. But this was... But he was... Wow, this was a man as strong as an ox. He wasn't letting go. I was fairly certain he could crush my throat with, the, with his bare hands if he wanted to. Somebody, anybody. No! Mommy! Oh, shit. Yeah, so I guess I'm dead, right? The man drew me up by my neck and violently threw me towards the center of the room. It was almost as if he was proving my hypothesis. The tissue and bones in my throat scraped together with the sickening, unnatural sound. I gasped for ear. My trachea was in pieces. I could feel my consciousness drifting away. I wasn't sure why, but then suddenly... Uh, but then suddenly... Wait, wait, what? Oh, but then he suddenly let out a, a blood-curdling moan and made a beeline towards the room on, towards the room's only exit. As he ran out, he turned around and slammed his hands into a heavy iron door and began slowly lurching, lurching close. Wait! I was locked in. I knew it right away. I, I ran towards the door as best as I could to manage, but I already knew I wouldn't be able to get out of here. Wait, please, help me! Huh? The girl I heard screaming was strapped onto the surface of the now overturned table, dangling helplessly. Please help. God, no. Open. Open, God damn it. It hurts. It hurts. Days pass. I couldn't even begin to guess how... How many? No light ever returned to the blood-drenched pitch-black room. And the girl I was trapped with had said a, hadn't said a word for a long time. I knew it smelled in here. I knew it was cold. And that I was in pain, but I couldn't sense any of it anymore. Was I alive? Was I dead? I wasn't sure if it even mattered. I just wanted to leave the room. Somebody please let me out. Hmm. All right, I I knew that. In my gut, I was all like, "Don't hide under, don't hide under the table," because we already did that shit in the other chapter. Couldn't get away with hiding away in a closet. All right, well, let's try that again. Let's load that up. All right. I'm just gonna skip all that. All right. Stomach tightened. I'm sure of it. Let's see. We're gonna hide in the closet this time. We'll hide where? In the cabinet. The footsteps were approaching fast. I ran over to the large cabinet on the other side of the room. Please open. The door opened without a difficulty, but there was a, uh, but they were the sort that automatically closed when left unattended. Oh well, no time for second guessing now. I turned around and jammed myself in first into the closet, grabbing the edges of the closet doors with my fingers and pulling them from uh from them for all my worth. Shaking my uh, shrinking my body into the cramped closet, I prayed silently for the footsteps to pass by this room. But then the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the lights in here, so I didn't honestly hold out much hope. Rapidly, my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenario began flashing through my mind, one after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in a vain attempt to calm myself down. I clenched my eyes shut and willed myself to swallow any sounds that would otherwise have leaked out. Naho. Naho, please help me. I peeked through the gap in the door, and my fears were confirmed. I was no longer alone in this room. The thing that was here, uh, the thing that was here with me was horrible. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either. And whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a, goat a grotesque face and an abnormally large body, not to mention a zombie-like disposition. He was horrifying. 
He had the limp body of a girl tossed over his shoulder. He walked over to the blood-covered table at the center of the room and violently threw her down onto it. Letting out a moan of agony, she be she wow. <clears throat> she came to. My God, she was still alive. Oh man, this has to be like right after. Wait a minute. No, this can't be right after fucking Mayu. I mean, they did say time is like warped in here, but is it possible? Her legs have been severed at the thigh, like completely cut off. How could anyone do something like that? Oh my God. Are we here at the same time as as uh as Mayu and company? The man straddled the girl and tied both her arms into metal restraints attached to the table. No. What was he planning to do to her? He was coming this way. No, 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 please no. The man passed right by the standing closet, instead turning his attention towards the nearby corner of the room where he began ramaging through a toolbox. He was utterly careless about it, tossing aside any tools he didn't need. Hammers and drills were clanging onto the ground and some sliding under the table. Each time the tool fell, he bent down and scooped it up. If I had been under the table, I absolutely would have been found out just now. Alright, you ain't gotta say it like that now. You ain't gotta do me like that. Before long, he pulled out a large pair of pliers. Returning to the girl's side, he once again stepped up onto the table and straddled her body. Oh, shit. What was he gonna do with those, exactly? Wordless, the enormous beast clamped down on the squirming girl's cheek and squeezed it with all his might. Oh, God. Then, as far as I was able to determine from my vantage point, he forced her mouth open and shoved the pliers inside. He readjusted his grip on the handle and skillfully began opening the two metal prongs while simultaneously pushing them down her throat. No, stop. Oh, God. Finally grasping the girl's tongue with his pliers, the man subtly yanked his arm upwards and in one single powerful moment tearing it from her mouth. Aw, oh, shit. You taking tongues now? I heard the sound of her mouth frothing over, and after a moment of squirming, all her movements ceased completely. That's when I lost it. Tears were streaming down my face, and I began peeing myself uncontrollably. Urine was pooling along the bottom of my cap- uh, bottom of the cabinet. Aw, oh, shit, you gave your- uh, You gave yourself away by pissing? Ah, oh, no, stop. I frantically contracted my stomach, forcing myself to stop peeing. And if any and if any had leaked out from here and gave my position away, I'd be a goner for sure. My stomach immediately fought this sudden denial with the pain. My stomach immediately fought this sudden denial with the painful cramp. Please, please don't do this now. The man tossed a severed tongue into the aluminum bucket at his feet, then roughly threw the pliers back into the toolbox with an ear splitting clatter. He grabbed the bucket containing the tongue and slowly disappeared from the room. Somebody had just died out there. I was in shock. I was in shock what I seen had utter had literally scared the piss out of me. I didn't think that ever actually happened. I had to get out of this room. If I stayed here until he came back, and if he found my hiding place, I could easily be the next one to die on that table. Slowly and shakingly I opened the cabinet door and reemerged. Oh shit. <laughs> The girl was still as a girl was still as a board. She almost looked alive, I'll bet gravely wounded, for her mannequin her mannequin like lack of wow. Mannequin like lack of any motion whatsoever said at all. I started at this fresh I stared at this fresh corpse and just felt so many conflicting emotions welling up inside me. I exited the room, fighting back more screams from the pit of my stomach that seemed in that seemed insistent on coming out. No. 
What is this place? If I'm dreaming, somebody wake me up, please. But I knew it wasn't a dream. I accepted that this place was real, even though it different, even though it differed greatly from any reality I have ever known. My brain was quickly nearing its breaking point. I stup I stupefyingly wow, a stupefying fog clouded my mind circuits. Naho, Naho, help me, please. Yeah, girl, where the fuck are you? <laughs> Days pass in this sweltering, uh, isolated bunker. I couldn't, e I couldn't even say how many days. My cell phone battery ran out after a while, then my watch died too. I was lost, completely, but I never stopped looking for Naho. I hadn't eaten, it. I hadn't eaten anything, I hadn't drank anything, and I slept so many times, I couldn't even begin to estimate how long I've been trapped here. The chocolate my mom gave me was still in my pocket, but I couldn't bring myself to eat it. I felt like it represented an important bond between me and her. Our friendship will last forever. It will never die. Naho. Save me, please. Hmm. hmm. Wow, Sachiko. What the fuck? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Shangri-La is now playable. Soulful Testimonies. Okay, got introduced to some new characters there. I got an achievement. Used and discarded. Okay. Well, that's interesting. First of all, that was a shorter chapter than what I than I, what this game you know, usually does. That was way shorter. That was only like... Oh my god. That was only like, what? About... That was about like just an hour, right? No, not an hour. About like an hour or two. Two hours, right? An hour 40? Something like that? I'm kind of... I'm kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm kind of thinking if I should continue with the next chapter or not. Because... Usually we go for like, for like the whole four hours or so, maybe even a little more. Well, let's put this, let's put the voices up, right? Also, for some reason, the music was like really quiet that whole entire chapter. Where like other chapters, the music wasn't as quiet. It would usually be like super loud. All right. So let's check the bonus, uh, the bonuses. Where is it? It's, uh, Soulful Testimonies. Now, is it both, okay, so it's both not, it's Naho, and is it the new girl as well, or is it just Naho? I guess it's just Naho. Oh, no, we have, uh, Mako. Not even, like, a last name, just Mako? Okay. So we have, we have those two voice actors. I'm guessing that's it. Do we have uh, anything for Kibiki? No. Guess we don't. All right. Well, I thought Naho was gonna be like the, the um, star of that chapter, but it was her friend. And then I guess we all knew that Naho was uh in the first game, right? I guess we find out that Naho ends up uh, I guess she got taken over by the Darkening. And then went crazy, and then she went and killed Kibiki, and, uh... Well, she went and killed Kibiki, and I think... I think, uh, Tag uh Takuchi got caught by, um... By the, you know, the, the big guy. The teacher. That guy, the one that Sachiko was, like, controlling, I guess? Or, like... What, what is she doing with that guy? Is she controlling him? I feel like she's controlling him. You know, so let's uh, let's hear um, let's call it. Let's hear Naho's voice actor. See what she has to say. Hello, 
I backed out of that because there's something I want to point out that is like a weird detail. So in the first game, they constantly g talk about how Naho has like these dead fish eyes that there's no soul in her eyes. And that's what's happening right there with her character portrait. So that's interesting. So maybe she has more of a role in this game altogether, down, like in the other chapters or something. みなさまこんにちは。おはようございます。こんばんは。さえのきなほやくも読まったのです。いやあ、プレイしていただきありがとうございます。いやあ、あれですね。きっとあのブラッドカバーリピーティットフィアの方をプレイなさった方はびっく
えっと収録するのも怖かったですみんなもさやかのように失禁しましたか<笑>えー、こんなこと言うと事務所に怒られちゃったりしてまあ、えー、可愛くてやりごたえのある役をできてとっても楽しかったですということでまこでしたありがとうございました Wait, was that it? Really? What the fuck? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> like, I, like, maybe it's because you uh, actually got to walk around as Sayaka, but I felt like Sayaka had more to do than Naho in the chapter. So to kind of hear, to kind of hear the voice actor of Naho go uh, say like a bunch of stuff, and then the voice actor of Sayaka would be like, Hey man, were you scared like me? It was great. All right, peace out. I'm done, bro. <laughs> Enjoy the game. <laughs> it's like, what? You have nothing else to say? I mean, she did say that Sayaka went through some turmoil, but it's all like, bro, you can't, like... Come on. <laughs> you gotta give me a little bit more than that. Come on. But yeah, Sayaka is, uh... Man, I really don't know how to say it because it... I can't... Sayaka as a character... She's not interesting, but the circumstances that she's around is interesting, right? Whereas, uh, I forgot this fucking character's name already. What was his name? Uh, uh, fucking, uh, started with a T. What's your name? Tell me your name. Tsukasa. There you go. Tsukasa. That's his name. All right. Yeah, um, like Tsukasa, who's like... He's kind of interesting. You want to know more about him. Apparently, you know, you haven't seen a lot of him uh, in the chapter he was in. He's just kind of there. But you can see that there might be, you know, there's like more stories you can tell with him. Meanwhile, Sayaka was just kind of, she was kind of bland, right? Her herself as a character was bland. She really didn't offer much to the table, but the situation she was put in was interesting. So her, she's interesting not because of her character, but because of the event that she goes through. And not not even that like uh by event that she goes through, I don't mean um I don't mean the fact that she's in the school and she's trapped and she gets carried away because you know we've seen that happen with other characters already. I mean the fact that it's all like all right. You have you and you have your best friend. And your best friend's like, yo, I need your help, dog. And you're like, all right, I got you. Best friends to the end. I believe in you. You're going you gonna to protect me? Yeah, I'm going to protect you. Then you get separated and nothing happens. And you're just all like, you're like, but I won't lose faith, though, because that's my friend. And I'm assuming, I'm, I'm just going to assume ultimately she dies, right? Just like Naho, she, she dies. Uh... Damn. Damn, she's just kind of like a... She's just a really sad story. Like, it's... Unfortunately for her, it's a really sad story, but... She's just not an interesting character. There's, like, nothing there. And she had more... She had more screen time than, uh, Tsukasa. Meanwhile, it's all like, Alright, Tsukasa, where's his headspace? Fucking, what's going on with him? How come... How come, uh... How come the teacher was marked by, like, her ghost shit going on, but he apparently wasn't marked, and you hear nothing of him later on? Does he somehow make it to Heavenly Host or something like that? Like, there's still some mystery about this fucking character that I want to know more about. But Sayaka just has nothing going on. Just a sad story. And assuming you played the first game, you already know what goes down with Naho, so there's no need to really focus too much on that unless they want to like delve deeper into the events that led her like we already saw the events of how she went to um uh hope's um uh, hope's peak academy that's dang it wrong but my bad how she went to uh heavenly host heavenly host elementary but we really don't get to see like what happened once she got there the only snippet of we have in that if you know, if she's not in the extras of the first game, I don't know. I have to still look look at that and see if that's a, a thing. But if not, then the only thing that we really have to go off of her 
um, you know, from going to the first game to this game, is that uh, we know that apparently she gets taken over by the Darkening, and then she ends up killing Kibiki, and that's it. We really don't know, like, from the moment of interest of entering the school up to that moment what happens to her like what made her mo what made her get taken over by the darkening was it just the fact that like she couldn't handle all the spirits around her was she like uh did she have like the same kind of reaction that um uh the other character had that i can't remember the name of right now the one that hangs out with this dude all the time the one that he has a crush on the girl who likes the cult shit can't really remember her name right now off the top of my head but, uh, like, does she have, like, a, like, an event like that where, like, she couldn't control any spirits that were, like, possessing her and then somehow she got taken over by the Darkening? I don't know. So, I would like to, I would like to know a little bit more about Naho. But, so far, now with this chapter under my belt, I want to say that, I'm going to be honest, I want to say, like, it was just too short and... Overall, it was just a really sad story, but compared to everything else that happened, it's not that interesting, right? It really sucks for- oh my god, I feel so bad for Sayaka. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here saying she's not an interesting character, but at the same time, like, she really didn't do anything that led this to happen to her. She really didn't do anything. Meanwhile, you have the first cast who's all like, let's fuck around with some spirits and shit, right? And the teacher got sucked into that, too. But, uh... But apparently the teacher was already marked. And she she kind of just, you know... A woman just showed up and said, Don't go to school today! You'll get fucked by spirits! She's all like, but I gotta go and be a teacher. So, you know... The only people who really, like... Brought this on themselves with the original cast... And I guess you can say the teacher too, because she escaped, but at the same time, she then later on did the charm with them. Man, I feel so bad for Sayaka. <laughs> I feel so bad for Sayaka. <laughs> oh man, maybe, uh, maybe with the whole time-space warp thing and, like, the loops happening, maybe we can somehow save her. Also, speaking of that, I didn't... Is there a character, is there a character log in this... Spirit Gallery unlocks status. What the fuck does that mean? Cast interviews. Okay. No, that's just like unlocking stuff. Gallery of Spirits. This is, uh... This is her mother, right? That's Naomi's mother. I want to see... God, remember this shit? Oh. I want to see... Oh my god, wait a minute. Are you serious? Oh, Mayu di I forgot Mayu dies too. Damn. I forgot Mayu died at the end of that. I do not like the teacher. How's the teacher not your favorite? <laughs> the teacher's my favorite. I love her. I love her already. But, uh, I hate, I hate for this to be the picture to look at, to, like, verify, because, you know, she's all wrapped up and it's all freaky. But, yeah, looking at, I'm looking at her ribbons and her hair, that's really interesting, because I forgot her fucking name. But, that's the same girl. That's so weird. So maybe the time warp shit is, uh, dude... Maybe when she, maybe when Sayaka got into the fucking, um, got into the school, like, they said that it exists in the, beyond a realm of, like, in, like, a different time and, different time and space and all that bullshit. Maybe she got transported, like, forward in time while Naho was still, got transported to where Kibiki and, and, uh, and, uh, fucking, uh, Takachi went. Because there's also a scene in the first game where you see Takachi, and he kind of just... Maybe they all got teleported to the same... Alright, hold up. I'm so confused. 
All right, theory time, right? I'm gonna say, because it's, it's pretty clear that uh, the characters have, uh, like, it, it, there's some time, there has to be like a month or two that passes before the cast of the first game does the, um, does the ritual and then ends up in the school, right? Because, you know, Naho has to put out the blog and then uh, that has to circulate around. And then, of course, some other students pick up on that, too. I'm going to assume that although Heavenly Host is supposed to be, like, in a fucking realm of its own between, like, time and space, I'm going to assume that every version of Heavenly Host, they're all happening in the same exact time period, but just in different spaces, instead of both different times and different spaces. Because that's what I thought was going on until somehow they get transported into a different space. So, say like these guys here, you know, Naho and company, they do the ritual like two months ahead of time, and they get transported to the school. And then two months pass. I'm just saying it's two months. I'm not sure if it's two months or not. But then like two months pass. And then the cast of the first game does that as well. Instead of two months passing in Heavenly Host, they get transported to the same time that these guys are here. It's just that to them, they've probably been there for like maybe, maybe a couple of hours or something. And I would assume that, uh, and if I'm going by that logic, I would assume that Sayaka got caught at the end of her story probably after, not after, probably sometime during the first game. Because in the first game, you also have a scene where you kind of run into, um, into Tachiki and he's like running away and freaking out. Huh. That's really interesting. I want to I want to know more about the I want to know more about like about the timeline of how all this shit is going down. Huh. Well, I guess I would have to theorize that and figure that shit out on the next time we play uh Course Party Book of Shadows because I'm too scared to go into another I'm too scared to go into another uh, chapter when we only have like about like an hour and a half left of stream time. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it here for now. After having my little chat on what I think about what's going on with the game. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a good stopping point for this. Uh, next stream, we're going back to more Sly 2. That's going to be fun. I had a lot of fun playing Sly 2 last stream that we did it. I, it was nothing but enjoyment for me. I had a good time. We, uh, what did we do on that? We, uh, played all the way, uh, we did the first two episodes 100%, right? We got all the clue bottles and stuff, so I'm going to keep going with that. I think the next time we hop into Sly 2, we have to do, uh, the third episode with Rajan. The third episode, which is the second time we have to face Rajan. And then, um... Yeah, that's going to be it. So, as always, actually, before I before I say my little outro, what's the next one? Shangri-La. So we have about like, all right, so we have about like four more streams with the uh, Book of Shadows, and then I'll think about what I'm going to do after that. But yeah, next time we uh, head into Book of Shadows, we're going to be looking at Shangri-La. Huh. I'm really interested now. I want to know more about, like, the setting. Hmm. Alright. We'll leave that for next stream. Next time we come back to more Course Party, we're going to be heading into Chapter 5, Shangri-La. And I'm going to I'm gonna take a guess right now and say that has to do with the, with the guy who likes taking pictures of dead bodies because, I mean, who else would... Who else would describe this circumstance at Shangri-La besides the guy who just gets off on his 
on his viscera and murder and shit or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Either him or the dude who likes killing people, which they never really explained why he liked killing people. I guess he's just crazy. But, um, that's going to be it for now. I want to thank everybody who came and watched live. Greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. If you're watching on the VODs, I thank you for that too. Please consider come checking me out live. And for those on YouTube that unfortunately get the playthrough once it's all done and, and you know wrapped up in a nice little bow, I uh, thank you guys for watching too. Please consider coming to check out live if you can. I know the stream hours aren't as good as they should be, but maybe in the future I'll be able to change that. Who knows? So, as always, I want to say thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay. I forgot my own outro. I stuttered for a moment. I forgot my own outro. What the hell is it? <laughs> stay happy. Stay healthy. There it is. Yeah. Now I remember it. <laughs> stay happy. Stay healthy. And take care.